We are BioDenitric and we are part of the BioDesign Challenge for 2020. My name is Stephanie and I am a Global Disease Biology major. I'm Sugan and I'm a Design major. I'm Yuki and I'm a Global Disease Biology major. Our project focuses on denitrification of groundwater using bioremediation. Let's watch a video that discusses the ongoing water contamination issues in farming techniques. Known as the food basket of the world, San Joaquin Valley in California is one of the most prominent agricultural production counties in America. Farmers in the San Joaquin Valley grow and harvest many different crops from peaches to alfalfa. Agriculture fuels the economy. It provides jobs for large communities in the valley, with over one-fifth of the valley's jobs being related to agriculture. The valley has immersed agriculture into its culture with signs such as, my job depends on ag, proudly hanging on the back of thousands of cars. With agriculture being such a prominent part of the valley's lifestyle, it's important to protect the industry. With a booming industry in agriculture comes a price. Agriculture is a leading cause of water pollution because of irrigation and fertilizers contaminating the water. In the late 1800s, Traver, California was a growing city with promise. Wheat was farmed and harvested expecting to bring Traver prosperity and wealth. However, the water became contaminated causing the townspeople to move away, leaving Traver a ghost town. Recently, people have begun moving back and implementing irrigation techniques to prevent this, but history will never be forgotten. Agriculture runoff continues to be a problem. With new research coming out, farmers are given guidelines on how much nitrate fertilizer they can use. These techniques can also be costly and hard to maintain over a long period of time. BioDenitric is researching a biological approach to be implemented in the valley to help the issue of agricultural runoff by recycling the wastewater to be reused on the farms. With the hope that we are able to help mitigate some of these issues relating to agricultural runoff in the San Joaquin Valley in California, we are determined to research and grow our project. Before we get into our project, some of the guiding principles that have helped us along the way were the economic status of the San Joaquin Valley population, effects of farming operations on animals, establishing a circular system for the ecosystem, and understanding and ensuring water quality. Farmers grow crops using nitrate fertilizers to stimulate growth, and the resulting runoff water is contaminated because there's extra fertilizers that isn't used by the plants. The ammonia in the water breaks down into nitrites and then nitrates, with where it contaminates drinking water and other water supplies. Because of these high nitrate levels, the contaminated groundwater causes methemoglobinemia in babies and causes cancer and birth defects in the community. It also harms the environment by stimulating large amounts of algae growth, which causes algal blooms, water column, and fish mortality. When left unchecked, contaminated groundwater can pollute water hundreds of miles away, affecting our user groups, which are the farmers and people living in rural areas. This is why we need to capture runoff water and groundwater on site before it is allowed to return to streams and underground aquifers. There have been ways that the problem of denitrification has been approached, such as distillation, reverse osmosis, ion exchange, and electrodialysis. All these methods are too expensive and will not work well on a local farm scale. The criteria of a good solution is important to analyze as we want our product to meet all of them. A lower cost than the methods mentioned before is ideal. For example, the ion exchange method used in a facility in Iowa costs $4.1 million to design and build and costs $7,000 a day to operate. The solution needs to work well at denitrifying the water, being efficient and accurate so that there are reduced health and taste impacts once it is filtered for drinking water. The life cycle of the solution should be self-sustaining so that there is minimal waste. From our research of how we could approach our solution to meet these qualities, we decided on using a biological approach to denitrify the contaminated water. Due to the inaccessibility of a lab and the bacteria we needed, I created this prototype at home. The benefit of this prototype was that I was able to see the nitrogen cycle take place. But what's more is that I was able to control the ammonia content and see the effect it had on the pH and nitrogen levels. This helped us relatively understand the amount of groundwater we would be able to purify at a given time on a large scale. Being able to control the environment that we grew the microbial ecosystem in is also insightful as we were able to recreate similar parameters to the San Joaquin Valley.
This is a 2D diagram to show the process that we want to implement. We have three tanks, one for the ground or wastewater, another is the microbial cellulose chamber, and last is the purified water tank. We prototyped our model after researching three key components for our project. The first area of research was deciding which bacteria to use. We decided to use Pseudomonas stutzeri because it is heterotrophic and aerobic. It also has been proven to have quicker denitrification rates and works in a wider range of conditions than other bacteria. We then needed to decide whether we were going to use immobilized cells, meaning the bacteria would be stuck in a medium that the water would pass through to be denitrified, or free moving cells, meaning the bacteria would move freely in water to denitrify the water. We decided to use immobilized cells because it stimulates cell growth better, has the ability to be reused, and can be continuously used as a bioreactor. It also works at various temperatures and pHs. We decided to use agricultural waste that would then become microbial cellulose because it works well with our specific bacteria, has a high efficiency rate in various conditions, and can make a circular system. We decided against using wood chips in our bioreactor because if there is no nitrate or not enough nitrate in the system, or if the water stays in the system for too long, the bacteria starts turning the wood chips into toxic methyl mercury. To further explain the life cycle of the microbial cellulose, it would first be crop waste such as the stalks of plants or overly ripe fruits and vegetables. This is converted to a sugar source that will be made into cellulose. This cellulose sits in a bioreactor where it's used as a medium to help denitrify the water. After its use, it will biodegrade and become a fertilizer for more crops to grow. Now, Sugon is going to show us how these parts have integrated into creating our prototype. This prototype represents three main parts in the bioreactor. The top on the left is a groundwater tank, the fish tank is a microbial cellulose chamber, and the top on the right is a clean water tank. This prototype helped visualize the full-scale model. This is a full-scale 3D model of a microbial cellulose bioreactor, a full 360 rotation of it and then going in and seeing the pipes and water structures that run under the crops. The water gets collected in the water pump and flows into the wastewater tank. At the end, there are three underground tanks, the wastewater, microbial cellulose, and the clean water tanks, in that order. The water courses out the back into the pipes that lead the crops, creating a circular system. Our product will be implemented on San Joaquin Valley farms, needing the use of heavy machinery. We would like to have a product available for farmers that is cost efficient, easy to understand, and sustainable where waste is recycled. A similar bioreactor was installed in Iowa using wood chips instead of microbial cellulose, and a farmer's review of it was very positive. In this clip, the wood chip bioreactor in Iowa is being installed, which would be a similar process to our idea. This system will impact the daily lives of our users and how they work. Sustainability is an important goal for our product. Our overall life cycle summarizes the main idea. The water cycle shows how the water is moved and changed throughout the farm, starting and ending with watering crops. From this cycle, we have the nitrogen cycle and microbial cellulose cycle. Another factor we would consider is the material of the bioreactor itself, since it would need to last a long time, but also be close to zero waste. This is an important consideration that we would think about in the future after fully understanding the mechanism and the cycle that occurs within it. Since there are live bacteria being used, we would need to establish safety guidelines to make sure they do not grow anywhere but on the microbial cellulose inside the bioreactor. If it gets into contact with skin, the bacteria could potentially cause a skin infection since it is an opportunistic pathogen. However, these cases are very rare. The bacteria should remain on the microbial cellulose and be contained, so there is a low risk of harm to users, non-users, and the environment. The distribution of the bacteria and microbial cellulose would need to be handled with care to prevent dual use. There would be negative health effects if someone were to ingest it or put it in an environment different than its intended one. Safety would be strongly emphasized with the installation of our project. The next steps of our project would include researching how to produce the microbial cellulose off-site and inoculate the bacteria onto it. As mentioned before, the material of the bioreactor and its size is important to consider for a sustainable system, and with these multiple life cycles, longevity is a factor that determines the efficiency of the product. Tests would need to be done to see how long each process takes and how long the biofilter lasts. We would analyze the weaknesses of our project and find new ways to overcome them. With these next steps, we will continue to expose the public to the idea of bioremediation and show our process through our website and Instagram account. We thank you for your attention and hope that you enjoyed hearing about our project.